Now, last week, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission released highlights of the state of devolved graft in the 47 counties covering the last 10 years. That the ESCC has for the last 10 years received over 10,000 reports of corruption and unethical conduct. Out of that, 7,310 cases were admitted as within the mandate of the ESCC. Out of those, 41% relate to embezzlement or misappropriation of public funds. 15 in every 100 of the reports relate to public procurement irregularities. The rest involved abuse of office, unethical conduct, bribery, unexplained wealth and other vices. ESCC further noted that there is a new form of corruption in the counties, that majority of the county governments are no longer remitting statutory deductions from employees' salaries. They noted that 80 billion shillings worth of pension contributions of county employees are yet to be remitted, that counties are no longer remitting NHIF, NSSF, and loan repayments for respective employees. I can't help but wonder what wisdom the county managers are using to deny their employees of such crucial services. When the employees eventually retire and claim their pension payouts, what will become of them when they get to learn that part of their deductions were never remitted? How about the bank loans? That a county official does not remit the loan repayments despite deducting those funds from employees' monthly pay, and then employees are slapped with penalties or even listing at credit reference bureaus as if they defaulted their loans. The SEC report documents at great detail some of the main investigations against nine governors, eight of them being former governors, including two that have been out of office since 2017. The SEC is on record calling on Kenyans to make their choices right at elections, not to vote for persons of questionable character. In the last election, they released a list of 241 candidates with pending cases or, invest or investigations. Several of them now serve as state officers having won elections or being appointed to new offices. And so when ESCC releases a list of pending investigations or cases way after elected officials left office, to what effect? What are Kenyans supposed to do? Why subject Kenyans to statistical information way after the fact? What's the problem with the anti-graft systems? But Section 11D of the ESCC Act requires the Commission to just investigate and recommend, in, and recommend prosecution to the Director of Public Prosecutions. The DPP then makes a decision on whether to charge or not. Should the DPP agree with the ESCC, cases take the full course of justice. The wheels are usually slow and oftentimes grind to a halt mainly for lack of sufficient evidence. There is a county governor still being pursued by the ESCC. In the previous political term, they were barred from accessing their office so as not to interfere with evidence, but they were re-elected and are now enjoying their second term before conclusion of the primary case. But again, the presumption of innocence demands that they are innocent until proven guilty. ESCC Chairperson Bishop David Oginde has been making a case that ESCC gets prosecutorial powers to pursue its own cases in court. But Article 257 of the Constitution that establishes the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions assigns the DPP state powers of prosecution and allows the office to take over any other criminal matter that may have been started by another authority provided there is consent. One may understand the frustration by the ACC to watch cases that they expeditiously investigated get stuck either at the DPP's office or in court. Well, soon there will be a new director of public prosecutions. Will a new broom sweep clean? Will the narrative change so that ESCC does not have to give detailed statistics of corruption reports and begin to update the country of the conviction rate, the number of people declared unfit for stealing from the public,
persons that failed to remit over 80 billion shillings of workers' pension contributions, and simply people that endanger the safety of the society. Without this, it will not make much sense to have anti-graft and criminal justice actors paid for by the taxpayer, yet the taxpayer continue, or the taxpayers continue to lose value for money despite paying for the watchdog. And that is my sense tonight. <laughs>